right, we are back in Berlin, Germany, and Barack Obama just walked down sort of a catwalk kind of thing, uh, and he is now in front of those microphones, and we will listen in for what is expected to be uh, his most important speech and moment of this entire trip. So, Barack Obama. Let me thank uh, Chancellor Merkel and Foreign Ministers Steinmeier for welcoming me earlier today. Thank you, Mayor Wolverine, the Berlin Senate, the police, and most of all, thanks to all of you for this extraordinary welcome. Thank you. I come to Berlin as so many of my countrymen have come before. Although tonight I speak to you not as a candidate for president, but as a citizen. A proud citizen of the United States and a fellow citizen of the world. I know that I don't look like the Americans who've previously spoken in this great city. The journey that led me here is improbable. My mother was born in the heartland of America, but my father grew up herding goats in Kenya. His father. <laughs> His father, my grandfather, was a cook a domestic servant to the British. At the height of the Cold War, my father decided, like so many others in the forgotten corners of the world, that his yearning, his dream, required the freedom and opportunity promised by the West. And so he wrote letter after letter to universities all across America until somebody, somewhere, answered his prayer for a better life. That is why I am here. And you are here because you too know that yearning. This city, of all cities, knows the dream of freedom. And you know that the only reason we stand here tonight is because men and women from both of our nations came together to work and struggle and sacrifice for that better life. Ours is a partnership that truly began 60 years ago this summer, on the day when the first American plane touched down at Tempelhof. On that day, on that day, much of this continent still lay in ruin. The rubble of this city had yet to be built into a wall. The Soviet shadow had swept across Eastern Europe, while in the West, America, Britain, and France took their stock of their losses and pondered how the world might be remade. This is where the two sides met. And on the 24th of June, 1948, the Communists chose to blockade the western part of the city. They cut off food and supplies to more than two million Germans in an effort to extinguish the last flame of freedom in Berlin. The size of our forces was no match for the larger Soviet army. And yet retreat would have allowed communism to march across Europe. Where the last war had ended, another world war could have easily begun. And all that stood in the way was Berlin. And that's when, that's when the airlift began, when the largest and most unlikely rescue in the history brought food and hope to the people of this city. The odds were stacked against success. In the winter, a heavy fog filled the sky above, and many planes were forced to turn back without dropping off the needed supplies. The streets where we stand were filled with hungry families who had no comfort from the cold. 
But in the darkest hours, the people of Berlin kept the flame of hope burning. The people of Berlin refused to give up. And on one fall day, hundreds of thousands of Berliners came here to the Tiergarten and heard the city's mayor implore the world not to give up on freedom. There is only one possibility, he said, for us to stand together, united, until this battle is won. The people of Berlin have spoken. We have done our duty, he said, and we will keep on doing our duty. People of the world, now do your duty. People of the world, look at Berlin. People of the world, look at Berlin. Look at Berlin, where Germans and Americans learn to work together and trust each other less than three years after facing each other on the field of battle. Look at Berlin, where the determination of a people met the generosity of the Marshall Plan and created a German miracle, where a, t where a victory over tyranny gave rise to NATO, the greatest alliance ever formed to defend our common security. Look at Berlin, where the bullet holes in the buildings and the somber stones and pillars near the Brandenburg Gate insist that we never forget our common humanity. People of the world, look at Berlin, where a wall came down, a continent came together, and history proved that there is no challenge too great for a world that stands as one. Sixty years after the airlift, we are called upon again. History has led us to a new crossroad with new promise and new peril. When you, the German people, tore down that wall, a wall that divided East and West, freedom and tyranny, fear and hope, walls came tumbling down around the world. From Kiev to Cape Town, Prison camps were closed, and the doors of democracy were opened. Markets opened, too, and the spread of information and technology reduced barriers to opportunity and prosperity.